Aliasing distortion gets discussed a good amount in engineering forums and online, but it's hard to find a video on how it's caused, how it impacts the sound, its implications for the music itself, and the pros and cons of oversampling. Now, some of these might be known, but I guarantee some aspects of aliasing haven't been discussed yet. So, let's look at all of this in detail as we cover aliasing, everything you need to know. First up, let's cover what causes aliasing. So aliasing is created when the signal goes above the maximum supported frequency. For example, if the sampling rate is 44.1 kHz, the maximum supported frequency is 22,050 Hz. Anything that goes above 22,050 Hz will be reflected down the spectrum in equal measure. So if a frequency occupies 25,000 Hz, meaning it's over the max supported frequency by 2,950 Hz, then it will be reflected down the spectrum by that 2,950 Hz from the highest supported frequency. 22,050 minus 2,950 equals 19,100 Hz. This is where the signal will end up, back in the audible range. Now to show this in real time, I'll use a sine wave generator before a sample rate reduction plugin. First, I'll generate a high frequency sine wave. As I reduce the sample rate, in turn reducing the highest supported frequency, notice how the signal is reflected down the spectrum. The more I reduce the sampling rate, the lower the frequency of the reflected signal. Now you're probably not using a sine wave generator and sample rate reduction in your project, so how does aliasing occur in a normal session? Well, in short, if you use a saturation plugin, compressor, distortion plugin, or anything that generates harmonics, it's likely that the signal will go over the max supported frequency. Going back to the sine wave example real quick, let's look what happens when I saturate a high frequency signal in a 44.1 kHz session. Now, even without reducing the sampling rate, harmonics that form above the max frequency, or 22,050 Hz, are reflected down the spectrum. Now, as you can imagine, this can occur with just about any signal, not just sine waves. Now, if I saturate 7,500 Hz and a third order harmonic is formed, that would create a signal at 22,500 Hz, or 7,500 times 3, meaning that harmonic would be reflected and end up at 21,600 Hz. Now, that's not a big issue. But if it's a fifth order harmonic or maybe a seventh, it'll go over the max frequency by a greater amount, resulting in a reflection that ends up in a more audible range. Now this begs the question, why is aliasing an issue? Well, you might have noticed that I've used the term harmonic when talking about multiples of a saturated frequency, but when I'm talking about aliasing, I've said something like a reflection of the signal or something along those lines. That's because a harmonic is a whole number multiple of the original signal. As a result, they often occupy frequencies that are notes. For example, if I saturate a signal that's the note A2, or 110 Hz, and I get a second order harmonic, that would be 220 Hz, or 110 Hz times 2. Now 220 Hz is A3, or a perfect octave of A2. A third order harmonic formed from 110 Hz would be 330 Hz. This is the note E4. Now it doesn't always work like this, but it often does. Just as importantly, Instruments have natural harmonics or overtones that are created by the instrument, not a plug-in or saturator. These harmonics make up a large portion of the instrument's perceived timbre. So, how does this relate to aliasing? Well, in short, aliasing generates frequencies that are not musically related. Whereas a saturator generates harmonics, again, whole number multiples of frequencies that are present, aliasing breaks this relationship by occupying unrelated frequencies. When it occurs to an individual instrument with natural overtones, the same thing occurs. The overtones of the instrument that are related to the played note now include a signal or multiple signals that no longer relate to what was played. If aliasing is high enough in amplitude, this becomes noticeable and sounds disharmonious, because it is, by definition. But there's another way it can have a negative impact on a signal. So let's cover aliasing and 90 degree phase rotation. Now you might have heard that aliasing can cause phase cancellation in the highs. I wanted to measure this to be sure, but it's true. When the signal is reflected down the frequency spectrum, it appears to have rotated phase by 90 degrees. To test this, I took a sine wave, reduced the sample rate to cause aliasing, and then used a high-pass filter to remove the original 1 kHz sine wave. When measuring the phase rotation of the aliasing, it appears to be 90 degrees out of phase. Now to be sure that this wasn't an effect of the high-pass filter, I measured the aliasing without the filter, and again, when isolated, they're 90 degrees out of phase. Tried again with a linear phase filter, and I got the same result. 
so it's safe to say that when the signal folds back or aliasing occurs, its phase is rotated. If these are multiples of the original signal and rotated, they'll likely cause phase interference. If they're overlapped with the original signal and rotated 180 degrees, they'd cause complete cancellation. Since they're rotated 90 degrees and may only overlap with a portion of the original signal, they'll cause partial cancellation. Regardless, the phase cancellation can be noticeable depending on the amplitude of the aliasing, the frequencies they occupy, and if there is any signal in the area with which it can interact. Real quick, Sage Audio is an analog mastering service. We've been around for 20 years, and mastering starts at $49 a track. There's a link below if you're interested, and a longer ad at the end of the video. Now with all of this in mind, how is aliasing reduced? Oversampling is the most common method for reducing aliasing. By increasing the sampling rate, the maximum supported frequency is increased. In turn, signals can occupy higher frequencies before aliasing begins. For example, if I'm running a 48 kHz session and I use 2x oversampling, the maximum supported frequency has increased from 24 kHz to 48 kHz. Oversampling also introduces a low-pass filter right below the highest supported frequency. This occurs in tandem with saturation, distortion, or any type of effect to ensure no harmonics can exceed the supported frequency. So, it seems like there's no reason to avoid oversampling. However, there are a couple of drawbacks. Now, the obvious drawback is the extra CPU. Running the internal processing of a plugin at a higher sampling rate is harder on your computer. The less talked about con is the linear phase processing that's needed to create such a steep low pass filter without introducing phase rotation. As a result, oversampling, if it includes this filter, which it likely does, introduces pre-ringing distortion. The greater the oversampling rate, the greater the latency introduced from the filter, resulting in higher amplitude pre-ringing distortion. So if you're not noticing any aliasing distortion, it might be best to leave oversampling off, since the cons from pre-ringing might outweigh the benefit. Last up, let's cover alternatives to reduce aliasing. Now, Since oversampling has some drawbacks, what are the better solutions? Well, if your computer is capable of handling a full session with a higher sampling rate, then that's a good idea. By increasing the sampling rate of the session to 96 kHz, aliasing will be reduced without the need for any linear phase oversampling. Next, you could use frequency-specific saturation plugins. If you keep the saturation band lower, then the harmonics that form will be in the low mids to the mids. It's only when you saturate high frequencies or aggressively saturate high mids that aliasing becomes possible. Lastly, if you're introducing aliasing during mastering, maybe from aggressive clipping, it may be best to use an RMS compressor prior to clipping. RMS compression will control the dynamics with significantly less distortion than clipping. By controlling dynamics in a clean way before clipping, you reduce the amount that you need to clip to get the signal to a louder level. So, just to sum everything up from the video since we covered a lot, aliasing is caused by a signal crossing the maximum supported frequency, is reflected down the spectrum, by the same amount that it went over. For this reason, it often occupies disharmonious frequencies. During the process, its phase is rotated 90 degrees, meaning it's likely going to cause phase interference. Oversampling reduces aliasing at the expense of additional CPU and the addition of pre-ringing distortion. And lastly, alternatives to reducing aliasing include using a higher sampling rate for the session, saturating only low frequencies, and using alternatives to clipping or reducing the need for clipping with RMS compression. Get professional analog mastering that accurately translates what you hear in your head. Seriously though, when people work with us, they get results. That's why major industry professionals like Keith Urban's producer Aaron Schurz works with us, Grammy award-winning AJ Castillo, Billboard number one charted artist Megan Lindsay, Grammy award-winning artist Tulis, The Voice singer Cody Ballou, Grammy-nominated producer Tyler Kane, Warner Music artist Ricky Young, and the list goes on. Why waste your time creating masters that don't accurately translate what you hear in your head when you could instantly fix a problem by clicking the link in the description and working directly with professionals who have already done what you're trying to do. We've mastered thousands of songs that accurately translate what each client hears in their head and it'll work for you too. Click the link in the description now and get direct access to us for personalized analog mastering that accurately translates what you hear in your head.